In 2012, The Hunger Games came out and it changed so many lives because it was filled with drama, angst, and a bit of teenage love, but also violent, violent death and beautiful costumes. In the subsequent years, three more amazing movies came out that we followed Katniss's endeavor to bring down the Capitol. And they're all based on the wonderful books by Suzanne Collins. By the way, g'day, my name is Kiralee and this is Kiralee Cosplay. If you're new here, we discuss all things cosplay, costuming and sewing related on this channel. And today we are focusing on the one, the only, the first movie of the Hunger Games series, which is just called The Hunger Games. And specifically, we're going to talk about the costumes. Now, overall, the costumes are amazing. The costumes in the film were designed by Juliana Makovsky, who did an incredible job at bringing the folks of the capital and all the districts to life through the use of costuming. However, there was one part of the movie that I felt was a real letdown and was a massive missed opportunity. The chariot costumes. Now I will say that Katniss and Peter's costumes were amazing in this scene. The black leather that were like three different types all on their costume and the fact that they lit up were amazing and were perfect for showcasing that these two characters had a very different feel to the rest of the characters from the other districts. But the other districts, well, they kind of looked like cheap party costumes and overall looked very samey samey. But before we talk about the districts 1 to 11 and their costumes in more detail, I want to talk about the premise, the setup if you will. Each of the 12 districts had their own stylists who were from the capital. These stylists were to create outfits that were to glamorize what the districts were known for by the capital. It kind of reminds me of Marie Antoinette wearing a simple chemise gown in that portrait that is so famous because she wanted to appear more common, even though it's made of the finest cotton and kind of added fuel to the fire in regards to, you know, the revolution. Are we seeing some of the similarities here? Just saying. So first and foremost, let's talk about the capital fashion because this is the lens in which the audience was going to be viewing these costumes that were being created, whilst also taking in mind that this is where the stylists are coming from. So they would ideally be creating these costumes to kind of fit the aesthetic of the capital people, which I feel was totally not achieved. So the capital fashion in the first movie are a mixture of bright, bright colors and black. This unique blend reflects the capital's nature. Bright, loud colors that are really obnoxious and a little bit cartoonish and a little bit clowny with the black. Because at the end of the day, the capital people are quite cruel when you think about it. They're letting other people starve in different districts while they live a life of luxury. And also every year, they kill off 23 out of the 24 young people sent in to battle for their amusement. They also wear a lot of hats, ruffles, feathers, flowers, butterflies, basically anything that's a little bit loud and out there. And don't forget they always wear gloves to hide themselves if you were to partake in the Disney idea that if you wear gloves you're hiding oneself. But the point is, is that these were all staples for a civilian that lives within the capital. Now saying all that, that is the mindset, that is the life that the stylists were coming from to create these costumes for the different districts. And this is why I think they failed. Let's go through the different districts. Starting with District 1. Now they are known for luxury. Now I will start off by saying that these costumes, they are not all that bad. We're going to get to that shortly. However, that is partly because of the fact that it is luxury, which means that they could go, you know, feathers and sequins and all of that. But also because of the fact that both of these characters, Glimmer and Marvel, are actually named. And that's because they are the bad guys uh, when Katniss gets into the arena. They also had actual frame time on their face and their costumes, so they actually had to look decent. 
So their costumes have feathers and sequins and he wears a velvet coat. Very, very lush, very lovely. Glimmer also wears a kind of headpiece that kind of makes it look like a peacock. And it's all fuchsia, which I think is a really interesting kind of colour choice. It makes it pop, but it still has a very capital feel about it. However, here's the thing. They are meant to be luxury. Luxury. I would have thought that if you were going to do luxury, you would have something that actually feels luxurious. I feel like they still did not hit the mark on these costumes. Also with Marvel's costume, I'm going to say those are gum boots, all right? They're very high gum boots. And he initially was going to be wearing this hat that looks like a really bad chef's hat. They got rid of that, thank goodness, because that would have been ridiculous. And now we move on to District 2, Masonry. We also have our other bad guys, Kato and Clove. And they were dressed as gods to represent their district. They were dressed in head to toe in gold and even had these winged headpieces that were very reminiscent of Nordic cross with Roman kind of overall look. But here's the thing. It looks like a cheap party costume. I mean, it's meant to be metal but it's leather and doesn't even look like real leather. It looks like painted pleather that they've just kind of sewn quickly onto the different breastplates or the bodice. So let's break this down because it, it hurts. It hurts so much. The skirt is horrendous on both of these outfits. The pieces are like a little bit skew if or wobbly. They don't really look like they match what's going on on the top. And then the boots, oh my gosh, the boots. So Kato's boots are literally spray painted rivers. Like they're just spray painted gold. And Clove is wearing platform boots that look like they're from the 1960s. I mean, literally you could take the dress that Glimmer wears from District 1, pair them with these boots and also the bracelets and you would have yourself a great 1960s outfit. Overall, I just think it looks cheap and tacky. Moving on to District 3, Technology. Now we get into the districts that we don't even know the name of the characters. District 3 is basically head to toe of shiny silver fabric. And essentially a hat that looks like it's made out of cardboard and then spray painted silver. The idea behind this was to dress them in silver to showcase the electronic wires that their district uses within their appliances. Yeah, I'm not buying it. The guy is wearing an overrobe of like silver mesh and the chick is wearing some sort of bolero that is like puffy sleeve and very metallic looking. By itself, I'm not a huge hater of the bolero because I love a good puffy sleeve uh, and boleros are cute, but just overall, it just looks cheap and tacky. It's just the headpieces. The headpieces of these outfits are just the worst. They look really, really pre-primary. Like a pre-primary student came in and like cut something out and then they whacked it together, they glued it together into a circle and then spray painted silver. That's the vibes I'm getting from it. Let's move on to District 4. Fishing. So this is the district that Finnick comes from. And to be honest, Finnick's outfit is <laughs> very nice. This one is not too bad in the grand scheme of things. There are togas that have lots of different blues and green tones to it with pearls and a starfish or two. They also both wear crowns and kind of give this Little Mermaid kind of vibe. Overall, I don't hate these ones. I would probably say it's more likeable than the others, but still, it's kind of sack-like and really not what the capital would find, you know, remotely fashionable. But I also want to point out here that this gives us vibes of that kind of ancient Rome where District 2 also gives us a very similar vibe, just gladiator versus spectator. Samey, samey. You know what I'm talking about? Now we move on to District 5, and that is Power. This is one of the worst costumes, I think. Uh, not the worst, that's District 8, but we'll get to that one. 
This one is the male tribute and Foxface. We still don't know her name, but Foxface was from this district. And they're literally covered in sequins, silver sequins, and they've got like even a dish, like an alien dish going around their head. With more sequins, of course. And the idea behind this was that it was the colour of wires and it caught the light so that it would glimmer like electricity. I have to tell you that I got really confused between this one and technology because they are so samey samey. The only difference here is that rather than a cardboard cutout with some random circles spray painted silver, we have a dish that is just full of sequins. They're meant to be a solar panel, but solar panels are like black, like... And the dress that Foxface wears and kind of like the sequin suit that the guy wears, they are so shapeless and so unflattering. And frankly, I really, I have to give credit to those two actors because they were on a chariot moving with essentially kind of this thing that would have been like a sail. Like costume designers, come on, come on. Moving on to district six, which is transportation. Ah, this one, this, oh. Okay, so this one. This one is definitely up there with some of the worst. It's not the worst and it's definitely not the second worst, but it's up there. It's in the top five. And the idea behind this one is that it was transportation to the moon. Now, I'm not even sad about the crescent shaped moon that's going around their faces. If anything, that's kind of interesting, and I would say that maybe that would work within the capital fashion. However, the costumes themselves are cheap and tacky. Once again, we see the same sort of sequin fabrics that we've seen in the previous district or two. We've got outfits that have no shape to them, very similar kind of panelling that we've seen on previous costumes, and the girl is wearing a billowing, flowy kind of dress-like thing, very similar to Glimmer's. At least with Glimmer's, it was shaped nicely and had some different variations with the embroideries and textures, and it was long and elegant and there was the feathers. This one is just like a hessian sack, but see-through. And of course, the guy's outfit was completed by wearing sequin braces. District 7, Lumber. I actually quite like these costumes. If you can overlook the fact that it kind of looks like they're dressed up in toilet roll, they are quite interesting. The idea behind these costumes were costumes that would look like origami, because that is made from paper, which comes from trees. Lumber. The headpieces especially are fantastic in the sense that they are real origami kind of created textures that almost look like they're wearing birds on their heads. Much better than the cardboard cutouts that we saw of District 3. So overall, I don't hate these ones. There also is a little bit of shaping in both the dress and the suit, which I think is gorgeous and I am glad that it's there. My only criticism with these costumes is that it's so white. There is no colour to differentiate between the different layers and all the work that went into these particular costumes. Far away, if you were a spectator, you would just see a white blob. And you've got to keep that in mind when you're a costume designer. What were the purpose of these costumes? They are to be seen from far away. But also, there would have been close-ups on those individuals as well, so they had to look good as well, like close up. None of these costumes are really ticking all of the boxes for me. With a heavy heart, I now move on to District 8. AK, the worst. It is meant to be textiles. But what we got was court jesters. As a sewer, this actually hurts me. Like, there was so much, so much that could have been done with these particular outfits. And instead of something magnificent, we got something that was a clown, court jester, I don't know. It's terrible. I mean, look at the faces of the kids that had to wear these outfits. You can already see in their face that they're not acting like they're being scared to go into the games. They're just looking at themselves and going, what the heck am I wearing? I'm going to be teased at school when, I, when this comes out. The thing that also kind of hurts when I'm looking at this is that when you look closely at the fabrics, they're really interesting by themselves. The ones that have the crosses on them, they've got at least three different colors woven into that cross pattern. 
But the ruffles that they created using the organza and the chiffon, they are left raw, they are fraying, it looks like a dog's breakfast. The costumes are completely oversized, there is no fitting whatsoever in any of the garments, and the hats, the hats are ridiculous they're they're once again screaming i'm a court jester <laughs> i'm gonna die for your amusement so maybe that was bang on with what they were trying to achieve i don't know maybe i'm a textile snob and i would like to see really lovely fabrics being used in the correct manner now let's move on to district nine grain hey look it's another silver costume with a big fan thing happening behind their heads like a frill neck lizard. And look, how about that? It's sequined again. Is this District 3? Is this District 5? I don't know. Oh wait, no, it's District 9. These ones once again have absolutely no fitting to them. They are sequined and they're gold and silver mixed together, but mostly just silver. And I am just thankful that whoever made the final call got rid of the frilled neck lizards because those really are a hazard for the poor kids getting onto the chariots as they move because that would be a kite surfing situation. Uh, no, top five worst ones. Top five. Moving on to District 10, Livestock. Or as we like to call it, Cheap Party Cowboy and Cowgirl. I actually couldn't find any full length pictures of these two in their costumes because I think that the actors took the costumes and burnt them because they look so ridiculous. The only thing that I could find was this plastic looking gold hat and also the skirt that the girl wore. From what we can see, it is a white outfit that has the gold detailing on the front in the shape of a classic cowboy look. Now, I will say that this is a glamorized version of a cowboy, being that it's in gold and white. Gee, we haven't had metallic colors yet, have we? And very, very likely a capital stylist would use those elements within a costume. However, there's nothing about these costumes that says this is made in the capital and appeals to the capital audience. It just looks like a bad Halloween outfit. Dogs barking. All right. District 11, Agriculture. And here we have Rue and Thresh. Already we can see that because they are actual characters within the story, they have a little bit more of a detailed kind of costume that actually are somewhat fitted. However, they give that real farmer vibe, which I think is really fitting and cute. However, definitely not through the lens of a capital outfit. The only thing that I think that looks like it's kind of capitalified is the fact that they're wearing a silver headpiece that is a detailed grain icon. And I think that is quite lovely and would actually work within an outfit that is meant to be capitalified and glamorizing that which they are representing. But the rest of it, it really looks like Dorothy from, you know, The Wizard of Oz. And I think that that Although it's cute on Rue, I don't think a capital person would actually create something like that. Not when you're looking at the rest of their fashion and what appeals to them. And then to round it off, just so that we're ticking it off, let's have a quick look at District 12, Peter and Katniss's outfits. As I mentioned at the start of this all, these costumes are gorgeous. And that is because so much attention to detail were given to these specific costumes. They're all in black, but there's lots of different textures to the leathers that were incorporated within these outfits. They didn't skimp on any of the detailing. They created detailing on the wrists and on the shoulders that were like spikes looking like coal. And they had this shimmering effect, which really helped when you added the flames to the back. The other thing I want to mention is that Katniss is wearing trousers, not leggings, not a skirt, not a dress, not hot shorts, actual trousers which means that she is giving a platform to say i can take you down just as good as any man that's going to be out here trying to take me down Ugh. and of course the costumes are all black because that is the color of cool and because it's cool and they do make a stark contrast to all of the metallics and also the horrendous coloring of district 8. as i said 
I have a lot of thoughts and feelings about these costumes. Overall, for the entire movie, I am amazed at the costumes overall. They are incredible. But once you see these chariot costumes, you cannot unsee it. And I felt that I needed to share that with you. Overall, I feel like this was a huge missed opportunity and frankly, a bit of a disappointment. What I would have liked to see would be to have 12 different costume designers create 12 different looks. And then from there, the head costume designer to help narrow it down to make sure that it fit within budget and that Katniss and Peter would stand out. Instead, what we got were costumes that either looked very similar to each other or cheap and nasty. Sometimes a mixture of both. I know I keep on repeating that point, but ah, it hurts me so much. And look, maybe I'm being too harsh. Of course, there are budget restrictions and we didn't really see all of the characters all that much within the chariot race. And certainly they didn't have names, a whole lot of them, right? So why does it matter? It matters to me because you're creating a world, a world in which we step into as the viewers. And we know that the stylists are from the capital. Like we know that they have this preconceived idea of what beauty is and what they're trying to create. And I'm sorry, I just didn't buy it from those chariot costumes. And with that, I end my rant about costumes from a movie that were, was released nine years ago. But hey, it's been burning in my heart for a long time. Anyway, guys, I hope that you enjoyed that in the comments below. Leave me a comment which district you thought was the most interesting, shall we say. All right, guys, see you later. Bye. I cosplayed so much, especially when it first came out. That came, came down. Oh my gosh, English is hard.